So for those of you uh, watching this on video, uh, this is the, the group of folks that uh, came out in person tonight. And I wanted to talk about the um, diagnostic project, which we have, you don't need to move the camera, but we've got it up here on the screen, so that's why you're gonna see me referring to this back and forth. So the main idea here is just to give you all an opportunity to go out into the real world and to do something uh, that would be realistic for change management. And you know, as I gave my introduction a moment ago, um, you know, I started in industry, so um, I really try to simulate as many real world dynamics as possible uh, through the class. So we're only going to do the beginning of the um, change management process. Um, you, know, you will need to do things like what we're gonna be discussing uh, shortly, which is entry and contracting. Uh, when you read the textbook, I think they focus pretty much on external consultants. But keep in mind that throughout the text, we're talking about even a practicing manager who wants to be an OD, who wants to function as an OD practitioner. Sometimes you can have an internal consultant um, who is an OD practitioner, and sometimes you have external. We probably think most frequently about external, but no matter who you are in any of those three categories, you still need to do that entry and contracting, which will be in another uh, week or so, we're gonna do that formally in the class. So the idea is for you to go into an organization and um, if you work somewhere right now, it can be your own organization. Um, if you're not working, um, I've used this assignment many times in the past and a lot of organizations are very willing to, uh, to get free consulting from you, if you will. Uh, basically, what you wanna do is to be able to interview at least five uh, employees in the organization and you're going to use the diagnostic framework that's here. So there are all kinds of, we're going to get into kind of diagnostic models later in the course, but this is a real simple one where you're just going to ask them about things like how does motivation work around here? Um, you know, does the manager motivate you? Do you feel motivated? Um, you know, I've got a couple starter questions for each of these areas. Uh, what's the level of satisfaction for people in your group? Now, sometimes I've had students say to me, does this mean we're, we're going in there trying to find problems? No, you can go to an outstanding organization. You're just documenting what's there. You're kind of like that anthropologist. You're just recording what you find. So they can, be, they can be doing things really, really well. So if they happen to have a great way that they keep people motivated, super. And that's what you would be writing about. So you're gonna do motivation, communication, decisions, Goals, controls, and I think there's six of them total, and leadership. So again, you're, you're on a exploratory quest, if you will. You're just trying to understand in this particular organization, how do they, what kind of controls are in place? You know, how do they monitor and keep things systematic and in control? What is leadership like here? Is it very participative? Is it autocratic? What have you? And then, so you'll write all that up. You're gonna to need to add questions. I just gave you two starter questions, but you're gonna to need to add questions to the list of uh, two that I have there. Um, you know, people always wanna know how long should the paper be? So, you know, I've put about, uh, Think about 20 pages, but that's only if you don't spend too many pages just telling me about the organization. I probably have that written here somewhere. So, you know, focus on trying to get about two and a half to three pages of analysis for each of those six headings. So two and a half to three pages about controls, two and a half to three pages about leadership, two and a half to three pages about motivation. If you kind of break it down that way, it seems um, very doable. 
Um, do want to include your questions, so I, I do want to see the additional questions that you added, so stick them uh, in an appendix. And then it's good practice, I think, to, you know, as a consultant, I would periodically include actual quotations or um, very specific examples. Ideally, you do want to tell people that you're protecting their anonymity so that people can speak candidly. So that's always tricky because some people use certain words and they, you know, if, they, if everyone else in the organization saw a phrase with those words in it, they'd automatically know, oh, Susie must have said that because that's the way she talks. Or, and it, when you're the uh, OD practitioner, you don't know that Susie's the way that that's the way she talks and that her example would be clearly known to everyone. So you gotta be careful um, and make sure you don't use direct quotations that might have unusual language in it or things of that nature. But what you want to do is to write up your findings in a way that it's like a narrative. So it's not just bullet points of what people say. Um, what you're gonna do is take all the bullet points, if you will, all the statements that people made and to kind of synthesize them together. So you're looking for common themes, consistent responses, outliers, you know, unusual observations. Um, so that's what you're going to write up. As, as I already mentioned, you know, the purpose is not to find problems. You can write up about our, if your organization happens to be incredibly effective, that's great. You're simply documenting that. And, um, you know, to your question, Alex, and then what you would do is make a five minute video presentation. Uh, I think it's due the, the final week of class there. So just make a video of, of yourself and post it to YouTube and then just, uh, I'll have a place in Canvas where you'll upload the link. But the video is not supposed to be just a summary of your paper. I'll have the paper, so I'll be reading the paper. The video is different content, and the content about the video is what did you learn about organizational change from this project? So does that, address what you were wondering about, Alex, yeah. or ask, ask questions if there's any other clarification I could provide. Have you done this kind of thing with a class before? Oh, yeah. Is there a way of seeing those videos so we get an idea as to? Um, that's a good question, because po posting it to YouTube is relatively new. And um, if that's new, then my that's last funny. university, we switched over from Blackboard to Canvas, with so I did learn Canvas just before I left, but everything that was once in Blackboard is gone, and I didn't teach this class over the summer. So oh, that's fine if it's not. I just thought if it was, it, yeah. if the YouTube wasn't a new thing, then, then we would have a basis for understanding. It's a lot easier to do it on YouTube. People used to have to upload a video you know, that they had um, created, so it was just inside Blackboard or, or the course management software. Okay. The technology is a lot trickier. Not many people can do that. Nowadays, you can just you know do a selfie video on your phone, quickly upload it to YouTube. But why don't I? I'll poke around for um, examples. Certainly, have examples of papers. Um, now, when I moved, I did try to unload as much. You know, I didn't move a ton of boxes of papers. But let me let me try to find some examples. My only caution with that is I don't want students to say, well, this is the cookie cutter model. You need to do it exactly this way. So as long as you all will promise me that, uh, that you won't take any example I offer as a, as a cookie cutter recipe to follow, uh, because I want you to feel you have some creative license in, in how you do this. So don't, don't use the questions. Maybe I won't give you the additional questions the other person asks, so, so you'll have to come up with the questions on your own.
So to me, you know, a great model, a great pedagogical model is when there's a feedback loop. So in order for people to uh, get as good grade as possible on the final project, um, you know, you all will submit at least three weeks and the dates listed down at the bottom. Uh, prior to the due date for the full report, submit a, a portion of it, like one of those six areas. So write up the two and a half to three pages of leadership, or write up the two and a half to three pages of controls and motivation. And send that to me, and I'll give you feedback about that. That's not for a grade. If you don't do it at all, you'll get you'll lose some points, but, but it's not graded. The, uh, the final submission is what's graded. And that'll help you to make any adjustments necessary for that section and the other five sections of the paper. And then I think I may have had, had it up a little bit higher. Um, what, if, you know, if you're going to an organization where you have to kind of convince them uh, to let you in, so to speak, then you, know, you do want to give them a report. So, what I, what I would suggest is, as I have here, don't give the paper to your client until after I've had a chance to look at it, because I'm going to be able to say, hey, wait a minute, doesn't look like you protected, protected somebody's anonymity here, or change the wording of this, you're being prescriptive, or um, you know, I, I might give you some tweaks to make. But what I usually, you know, I've directed a lot of student projects and organizations myself, and what I've, what I've been able to do when I've kind of sold it to them is to say, I can almost guarantee you that you're going to hear at least one provocative idea from this student work. And, you know, you may not act on that provocative idea, but, but there's some real value in what that will do to provoke your own thinking. So uh, I haven't had it people had any problems. They've sometimes gone to a public library or uh, the local Taco Bell. Or, um, but uh, most of you are probably going to be in a work capacity. Um, and you may, if you're in an organization right now, you might not, it won't be as beneficial for you to do it with your immediate work group, perhaps. So, you know, go, go to a, the department next over. Um, so that, that gives you a little more objectivity about it, too. You don't want to interview five of your co-workers in your same department. That won't be nearly as interesting. It'll be harder to stay objective about that. So any comments, thoughts, questions? Jared? I'm just kind of wondering what the percentage of like describing what we see happening versus what we are, you know, thought, are we identifying what's going on um, from them and like trying to put it in the terminology we've learned in the course or are we trying to figure out some constructive feedback to them, like what's the meat of the paper? Well, I think both of those are, are, would be good ways to, you know, including both would be ideal. So you're clearly, and, and this is, that's a good question about everything I grade for in the whole course, I'm grading for your demonstration of knowledge of course concepts. So if you create this paper and don't reference a single concept from the course, you're not going to be I mean, you'll, you're, you'll be demonstrating some knowledge of the course just by engaging in this appropriately. But, but you're going to want to use, we're going to use, we're going to um, learn some diagnostic models um, going forward. We're going to learn some interventions going forward. So you may have a recommendation about um, maybe team building would be helpful here. Maybe process improvement would be helping, helpful here. So, you know, you will be making those kinds of uh, suggestions. Um, given that this is stuff you're not doing because you're uh, not professionals at this, you know, I'm, I'm, that's why I want to see the papers before you, you give them to back to your organizations because I want all those suggestions to be tentative in the sense of, you know, I've interviewed five people. This is the thought that comes to me may not may be right, may not be. Um, so that answer your question? Say some more, ask some more than if it's not totally no, it's, there. It's, it's, it's pretty good, I mean like, are we gonna be saying, are we gonna be choosing like online examples of some company that's implemented this? Or, I mean, 
like, I just wanted to sort of note of the 20 page paper, like, where our percentages should be on describing what we see, uh, what we observe, versus what we prescribe to the people. Well, I think prescribing is not going to be a lot. I think analyzing, so let's say you have three pa papers about leadership. I'm sorry, three pages about leadership. So you might have a page and a half to two pages that are descriptive. But then the other page and a half or so is probably going to be your analysis, where you're saying here are common themes, um, this fits with this leadership model that's in my textbook. So I would say you might at the very end have one page that's prescriptive, so half or so descriptive, the other half or so analysis. Does that help? Perfect. Okay. Good questions. Anything else about about how it will have it'll make a lot more sense once we've you know we've only done so it could be any kind of project that that is currently going on or is there some kind of like idea of a project that you have envisioned that is more acceptable than another. Something where a change is taking place. Yeah, it okay. Yeah. So, you know, not sort of a routine project that we've done 10 in a row and now we're doing number 11, change out of a shift or something like that, but you know, maybe we're something different. That's going to work the best. So changing process, changing flow, changing policy or procedure yes. or something. That will typically work the best. Okay. Let's cut, cut the film there and if you can